Hey, what's up, YouTube? I hope you are hungry because we've got a lot of good food in this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what I've been eating over the course of a few days. Uh, we'll talk about accountability. If you remember, I was uh, overweight at one point. We're going to see how I'm doing at keeping it off. Also, we're going to talk about how my diet kicks the ass of what's called the standard American diet. Now, if you don't know what the standard American diet is, it's basically this. Uh, candy, junk food, fast food, sugar, soda, deep fried foods, high calorie foods, uh, simple carbs. And that leads us to this. Top 10 causes of death for the years indicated. Believe me, these are pretty constant. I'm going to teach you how to survive living in this uh, screwed up country where uh, heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease. It's all food related. It's all killing you. All right. I'm going to teach you how to survive this. All right. My first meal of the day was mixed vegetables. We've got roasted peppers, roasted broccoli, cauliflower, snow peas. There's some onions in there. There's parsnips. There's some beets under there. Right. So it's a vegetable medley. And I have a little bit of pork belly for flavor. Now, if you're obese, I would recommend leaving off the pork belly and just eating the vegetables. The main idea here, low calorie, high fiber vegetables, complex carbs. It's going to fill you up, going to give you energy throughout the day. All right, the next meal. Yes, the duck is back. We've got some duck legs, which I cooked in the slow cooker. They are very tender. Then I cut off some of the excess skin and I fried it up. I crisped it up in its own duck fat. This is basically protein and fat. All right. And uh, it was quite delicious, I assure you. Next meal, we've got some fish. These are Branzino. They're available at the local farmer's market occasionally. So what does this meal accomplish? What what is it? What does it break down to? Well, really, it's mainly protein and some fish fats and fish oils, basically protein and some beneficial fats. All right, that's all it is. So what don't you see? Well, you don't see any French fries now, do you? Right? You you don't see any simple carbs. You don't see dessert either. All right, next meal. This was another first meal of that day. We've got cauliflower, broccoli, cucumbers, carrot, parsnips, onions, basically a vegetable medley. Someone less left a passive aggressive comment. Oh, you must crap a lot, <laughs> bro. Show me your Taco Bell and KFC shits. I think my shits are uh, far more healthy than your fast food shits. Just saying. Next meal. A classic, Spam and Eggs. We've got five eggs scrambled and half a can of, or half a tin of Spam Light. According to my calculations, this meal was 830 calories. Keep in mind, a lot of people are scared of eggs, but cholesterol is a precursor to testosterone, and I have quite a bit of that, as we'll see. All right, next up, ribs, yeah. Now... Again, people are going to say, can you really, can you really eat this stuff? Bro, it's what you don't see that counts. What don't you see? Do you see uh, fried rice? Do you see French fries? Do you see loads of, uh, of bread? Do you see a lot of pasta and ramen? No, no, you don't. So take, take note what you don't see. Here are some recent pictures of me from my air gun reviews and from my knife reviews. I don't think you should show what you eat or advocate a diet unless you can also show uh, what that diet does to your waistline. Keep in mind, I used to be obese. In fact, this is what I used to look like. Fat as hell, man. And this is what I look like now. So I lost the body fat, but I also increased muscular development. I got into calisthenics, running, and weightlifting. Again, this is what I looked like when I ate junk food and fast food every single day. And this is what I look like after not eating fast food for years. I had to give it up because I was an addict, and at some point you have to go clean and sober. 
I am 48 years old, right? So I'm almost 50 years old. Now, occasionally I get people saying, oh, you're going to be too skinny. Nope, I, I weigh 185 pounds. Okay, so that's not underweight. I'm 5'8", I weigh 185, it's mostly muscle, and I'm 48 years of age. Let's review some helpful tips. A healthy diet only needs to consist of basically two things. One would be high-fiber, low-calorie vegetables, and the other would be sources of protein with a little bit of beneficial fats. Now, if you burn a lot of calories, like if you're doing weightlifting and running and calisthenics as I do, you might need more calories, right? That's why I go a bit heavier on the fats. And, you know, you would have to look up what a keto diet is to understand why that's okay. You see some chuck steak there and some pea pods, right? So just some vegetables and, uh, and some protein and some fat. That's all. The best thing you could do if you want to lose some weight but you don't want to count calories at all is just to cut out all fast food, right? Most of you, if you just never ate fast food again, you would probably drop 20 pounds without even measuring calories, just from that alone. And another good step would be to reduce your sugar intake, which you have to do anyway if you have diabetes or you're pre-diabetic, as almost all obese people are going to be insulin-resistant heading towards pre-diabetes. Uh, that food you see there is just some turkey and mushrooms. Yeah, another thing you can do is swap out simple carbs for complex carbs. So basically more healthy vegetables and less rice, less pasta, less bread. I'm not saying go no carb. I mean, look at all the vegetables I eat. Those are all carbs, but they're complex carbs. A lot better for you. Yeah, this next dish is more vegetables, and we've got some mozzarella cheese there. Now, again, if you are very overweight, I would recommend leaving off the cheese and just eating the vegetables. If you're obese, you have to go into a significant calorie deficit, right, if you want to lose fat. But once you do that, and once you do lose the fat you can shift to a maintenance diet, which is what I eat, and then you'll be able to eat all kinds of good stuff and maintain. You know, we live in a very sick society. We live in an unnatural and stressful society that breeds and increases mental illness. Most Americans lack the psychological stability to be consistent in a health program, right? That's why people are bad at losing weight, most people have a very low tolerance for discomfort, so whenever you're trying to change your habits, it's going to be unpleasant at first, and most people just can't take that. Right? It's just a symptom of our sick society. But anyway, that's me again. That was taken last weekend. Basically, I've found a way to make the food that I eat work for me, whereas most people, the food that they eat is actually killing them, or at least it's, it's going to be torturing them, right? Most people are not suited for weight loss at all. There's like a 90 to 95% long-term failure rate. Your chance of successfully losing weight long-term as a normal person, it's about the same as the chances you would have if you walked into a boxing match against a pro boxer and you don't have any training in boxing. But anyway, now you're not completely untrained in weight loss because I did give you a few tips which most people will probably ignore. I'm sure most of you are not going to give up fast food. You're going to keep eating a lot of sugar and you love simple carbs. But perhaps if your health condition gets worse, you can return to this video and maybe it won't be too late. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.